everyone, Dusty here, and I just finished up an easy 30 minute run, and it felt so good to get back into it. Um, today was day one of me starting to slowly get back into training to prepare for my 2018 season. Still relatively unstructured, but just getting back to the old swim, bike, and run. So on my run today, I thought, what is something that I could share with you on the vlog today? And something popped in my head right away and I thought I would share with you how I finally broke my half marathon time of 116 quite a few years ago after running 116 for probably every half marathon I did for two years. So just as a little back history when I first got into endurance sports I got into it with a half marathon and in my first half marathon I ran a 124 and slowly over the next three years I progressed that to 116 and then that was it. I hit my plateau I had probably I probably ran my next four or five races at 116 and to say that was super disappointing to me would be an understatement. I improved every race up until I hit 116 and then I couldn't get any faster. And then eventually my friend and I sat down about two months before one of my half marathons and we would just try new training methods all the time. And I think our idea at this time was, you know what, why don't we train for a fast 5k? and let's just live on the track for six to eight weeks and see what happens. So over that course of two months leading into my half marathon, we probably hit up the track two to three times a week and we did a lot of high intensity workouts that I wasn't really used to doing in my training. We had done 200 meter repeats, 400 meter repeats, kilometer repeats, all with varying rests in between each of the intervals. Some some of the short 200 meter intervals were max effort with long rest in between. We did some kilometer intervals at our goal 5k pace with short rest in between. And yes, it wasn't half marathon specific training, but you know what that big chunk of run training did for me? It made me totally kick that half marathon in the ass. And I destroyed 116. After being at the 116 mark for for many races, I ran a 114 flat, which was just, it was mind blowing to me that, that I did that. And the craziest thing about it all was it felt relatively easy on race day. I was comfortable, especially for the first two thirds of the race. So just to backtrack a little bit, a 116 half marathon is about 336, 337 per kilometer pace. And when I ran my 114 flat, I held 3.30s the entire day from start to finish. I did. Now for many years, 3.36 was kind of my threshold because I wasn't going any faster than that. And going to the track and doing all that specific 5K training at a much, much faster pace made 3.36 feel like it was nothing. It made it feel like it was my warm up and cool down pace on race day, at least, especially through the first 10K. I remember we went through in 35 minutes and I was like, holy crap, like my, my best 10K time isn't much faster than this. So not only did that sort of training make 336 per kilometer feel easy, it made 330 per kilometer feel easy. And then later on that year, I started to get into triathlon and I think in my half Ironman that year I ran a 116 off the bike so definitely did wonders for my run fitness and then since then I've taken that sort of training and, and obviously applied it to my training all the time and I've taken my half marathon time from 114 to 113 to 112 to 110 so what's my point to all of this well, I started to plateau at 116 or 336 per kilometer pace and my biggest problem was I wasn't doing enough work faster than that pace in training. I would do lots of runs or intervals at really close to my race pace, but when it came time to do the race, I just, I was too close to my ceiling. I hadn't raised the ceiling, so to say, in training to, to really take it to the next level. Then when I went to the track and did some 5k training and then started doing some really short intervals at sub 3 minute pace or even some kilometer repeats at way under sub 330, that started making race day pace feel pretty effortless. And for the most part when you are running your half marathon it should feel pretty comfortable. It's a half marathon, it's not a 100 meter sprint, your heart rate shouldn't be in your throat and you're in puke mode the whole time. It should get hard 
should get harder to hold that race pace as it goes on, but for the most part, something like a half marathon should be pretty comfortable. So I'm not saying that you have to go to the track and do exactly what I did, but you do need to start running faster than what your goal race pace is. So if you want to break, say, 40 minutes for the 10K, well, you need to do some work at a lot faster than four minute per kilometer pace. It's just so straightforward, but I find so many athletes get so caught up in running super close to their so close to their race pace and never going a lot faster that they, that they just become good at running that same pace over and over again and as a result I know tons of people who have had the same exact times for many many years sometimes they think running more will make them faster and yes sometimes volume can make you a little bit faster but if you're still not putting in that high hard effort that's faster than race pace then you're probably not going to get a whole lot faster Take myself for example, when I do my hard runs, they're always a lot faster than race pace. So yes, that doesn't mean I'm running 21K at three minutes and 20 second pace, but I might do say a lot of 10 by one kilometer trying to get them all under 310. And that sort of a really hard effort makes 320s on race day feel relatively easy, especially during the beginning moments of the race. And then on the flip side of it, a lot of my easier training is done a lot slower than race pace. And I usually don't actually hit race pace that often. I'm usually a lot faster than race pace or I'm usually a lot slower than race pace. And when I was running 116 time and time again, my fast efforts and my easy efforts were a lot closer. So in conclusion, if you can take anything away from this, I would say start polarizing your training more. So you have your goal race pace, right? Start doing some of your hard runs a lot faster than that pace and make sure that you're doing your easy runs easy enough. I think especially doing the easy runs easy enough is a really hard concept for a lot of people to get and, and trust, myself included. but. But they're easy runs for a reason. You don't need to look at your watch and think, oh my goodness, I'm running a minute slower than my race pace. I'm, I'm feeling good. Maybe I should just bump it a little bit faster. No, you shouldn't. You keep it easy and you save the hard efforts for the hard day when you need to go 10 seconds faster than your race pace. So I hope that can help out a few of you because I know how frustrating it is to keep putting in the work and just hitting the same times over and over again and thinking, oh, you know, it must be a volume thing, I'm not doing enough. And that all isn't always the case. Take it from me, I actually trained less in those two months, but I started adding a lot more intensity, and for the first time in years, was actually doing intervals that were faster than my 116 pace. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe for more everything running triathlon and nutrition related.